When a slightly soluble solid such as silver iodide is placed in water, an equilibrium is established between the ions in the solid and in solution. In this view, the water molecules that solvate the ions are not shown to simplify the illustration. The solubility equilibrium is expressed by the solubility product. The silver and iodide ions are of equal concentration in the solution. When sodium iodide, a soluble salt, is added, the concentration of iodide ion is greatly increased. This means that the product of the silver and iodide concentrations exceeds the solubility product constant. Because the product of the ion concentrations exceeds KSP, additional solid silver iodide forms until the product of the iodide and silver ion concentrations again equals KSP. At equilibrium, when the product of the silver and iodide concentrations equals KSP, the silver ion concentration is much smaller than the iodide concentration. The addition of sodium iodide, which greatly enlarges the concentration of one of the ions in the solubility equilibrium, has reduced the solubility of silver iodide. This reduction in solubility is an example of the common ion effect. All right, in this video we're going to solve problems relating to the removal of heavy metal ions, phosphates, and nitrates from water by chemical precipitation. There are a few sort of um, connections we can draw to the previous curriculum. The first one is when we were looking at the SL content of E.6.1, looking at the pollutants we find in wastewater. So some of the heavy metals and their sources of where these heavy metals come from, uh, this is a connection. We're going to look at how can we remove these types of heavy metals in this um, video using solubility. And then in terms of the nitrates and phosphates, we can remember that they come from fertilizers, um, and in the case phosphates can also come from detergents. There's also a second connection in the um, tertiary waste treatment. So when we were looking at that in E.6.2, um, the last step included a chemical precipitation of, again, removing heavy metals and looking at the different methods that we would do that with. Um, one case adding um, hydrogen sulfide and the other one um, adding calcium. So we're going to try and, and make connections to understand how that works mathematically uh, with a solubility constant and connecting that with equilibrium. So first thing we need to note is nitrates are nearly impossible to remove by precipitation. Uh, so if you recall back to the earlier studies and the tertiary water treatment, the nitrates are removed um, through um, bacteria in anaerobically. Phosphates are easy to precipitate um, because they're only soluble with um, alkali earth metals and ammonia. And heavy metals are easy to precipitate as well and depending on which heavy metal um, they will have slightly different solubility rules. So what I'm writing here is um, essentially the uh, equation for the physical process of dissolving. Now this is supposed to be the equilibrium symbol um, with the double arrows, um, but in this uh, program it's quite difficult to make it properly, so I've just done a, a double sided like this. This is not the right way to write it, but that's the best I can do. Uh, so if you start with a ionic compound um, in its solid state and it dissolves into um, its ions, a uh, cation and an anion, aqueous, then we can represent that uh, in terms of a equilibrium expression and that equilibrium expression takes the form of again products in this case um, our ion concentrations raised to the power of their coefficients um, divided by the reactants but in this case the reactants are solid and we never include solids in a solid in a equilibrium expression so making the KSP um, is KSP is the same thing as like KC or equilibrium constant whereas equilibrium constant is for a chemical reaction KSP is for solubility so the SP stands for the solubility product so it's the same um, idea we're just now using it with a physical process it's still products over reactants
Now, if we look at this value of Ksp, uh, precipitate, and this is a short way to write it, will form if our solubility product, which is looking at this side, um, is greater than Ksp. So let's take a look at an example here. So given the Ksp of calcium sulfate is 3.0 times 10 to the negative 5 at 25 degrees Celsius, calculate its molar solubility in water at 25 degrees Celsius. I should note that, of course, solubility changes with temperature, uh, so all of these Ksps are specific to a certain temperature. So what we would do here is we would first step would be to write out our um, Ksp expression. So again, products over reactants. So if you were to think about it, um, calcium sulfate is going to be dissolving into calcium ions and sulfate ions. So those are our two products, and it's going to be in a one-to-one -one ratio. So we fill in what we know, 3.0 times 10 to the negative 5. And then we know that since it's in a one-to-one -one ratio, we can represent um, each concentration as x, something we're solving for. So there's going to be a concentration x for calcium ions, and then that same concentration for sulfate, because it's in a one-to-one -one ratio, as you can see. So we end up with x squared equals 3.0 times 10 to the negative 5. So we take the square root, and we find that the concentration x is equal to 0 0.0055. So that would be the concentration of both calcium ions and uh, sulfate ions at equilibrium. So determine if a precipitate will form when the ion concentrations are, in this case, calcium ions, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 3, and sulfate, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2. We take a look at, again, setting up that expression. And then in this case, substituting in the values we know. And then we end up with 1.1 times 10 to the negative 5. So we compare that to Ksp, which was 3.0 times 10 to the negative 5. We see it's smaller. So since it's smaller, there's not going to be a precipitate formed. On the previous slide, we talked about a precipitate forms when the solubility product, in other words, what we do over here, is larger than Ksp. So since it's smaller, it's not going to form a precipitate. Another type of question we get is calculate the minimum concentration of sulfate ions required to precipitate the calcium. So in this case, we're going to set up our same expression. And this is still building off uh, the previous question. So we know what the calcium ion concentration is. is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 3. And we're asking what concentration of sulfate is actually going to give us um, a solubility product that equals Ksp. And when it equals, that's when the precipitates start. So we plug in what we know. We do know the Ksp. Uh, we do know the calcium concentration. So we solve for x being the sulfate. So if we um, calculate or if we establish the concentration of 0 0.03 um, moles per decimeter cubed of sulfate ions, then we're going to start to see precipitation of the calcium sulfate. Now the last one is what the video at the beginning was talking about, which is the common ion effect. And so to visualize this, um, what we can sort of identify is what is the equation we're actually interested in. And that's usually the one in which there's a precipitate. So potassium nitrate is not a precipitate. All nitrates are soluble. So this is not really the one we're totally interested in. We're focused in this one because potassium sulfate is a precipitate. So we write the expression out, or the equation out, and we can see that there's a 2 to 1 ratio. So that's why here we can see that there's 2 potassium ions in red for every 1 sulfate. So 2 to 1 ratio. Now, what we do is, if we ask ourselves, how can we form more precipitate by adding another substance, what we can do is add something else that is soluble and has one of the same ions. So in this case, we decided to use potassium nitrate because it also has potassium ions. So what we do is we add in these extra potassium ions by adding potassium nitrate into the same beaker.
So now we have two sources of potassium ions and what happens is now we have a higher concentration of potassium ions. Of course if we look back to Le Chatelier's principle if you increase the concentration of something in your products it's going to shift equilibrium to the left which would create more products. This is what we call the common ion effect. In words what we can say is adding potassium nitrate gives more potassium ions which shifts the equilibrium of the dissolving of potassium sulfate to the left producing more precipitate. So what you want to do is identify which one you want it has the precipitate in it then look at what ions there are and then ask yourself you know what can you add to try and shift that the other way. Usually you try and add the other one like for example we usually want to remove sulfates so I don't want to add more sulfates because I really want to get rid of sulfates I'm gonna add I'm gonna look at what's with the sulfate in this case potassium and then try to add that because that's gonna get rid of sulfate and I'm not too worried about that extra potassium so let's look at how we can sort of um, apply this so what concentration of NaOH should be added to 0 0.01 moles per decimeter cubed of magnesium ions in order to produce magnesium hydroxide precipitate which has a KSP of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 11 so again this is going to be common ion effect the one we're actually interested in is going to be um, the magnesium hydroxide precipitate um, and dissolving into Mg2 plus and 2OH minus. We're going to look at that. So we create our um, expression, our solubility constant expression, and we plug in what we know. So we know the KSP, and then we already know what the initial concentration of magnesium ions is, so we plug that in, and then we take a look at what we don't know. We don't know the concentration of hydroxide that is going to give us a precipitate. So we're going to represent that as X and then of course we're going to have the 2 because the coefficient becomes the power. So once you solve for X um, you end up with 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5. So if we um, add a concentration of um, sodium hydroxide or or the concentration of hydroxide we need in order to precipitate it is this. Now we look at it and the OH comes from in a one-to-one -one ratio with the sodium hydroxide. So this would be an equal concentration of NaOH as well. So adding this concentration of NaOH will help us precipitate that.